Good morning, everybody. Welcome to PSG of Mercer County. The Professional Service Group of Mercer County is a group that is here for you, anybody that is in any kind of career transition. And also, we'd like to say happy Aloha Friday. So if you, for those of you that have been with us for a while, you know that every Friday I do wear my Aloha shirt. It will work out nice next week because next week I will get my first coronavirus vaccine and I have to wear a short sleeve shirt. So I will probably wear one like this. So we do celebrate Aloha Friday every Friday. Of course, it's a little chilly today, but always have Aloha spirit. And in addition to uh, Aloha Friday, today is the 66th birthday of the uh, comedian and magician Penn Jillette, better known as half of Penn and Teller. So if you're fans of Penn and Teller, you may want to wish uh, Penn, the tall guy, a happy 66th birthday. Uh, not really sure how to do that. I'm sure you can on social media. And I'm wearing one of my blue Hawaiian shirts. It's not because I'm feeling blue or in a sad mood or watching Elvis Presley movies. Um, the reason why is uh, uh, it today is also National Wear Blue Day. So some of us are familiar with the uh, pink ribbon that we celebrate once in a while, breast cancer awareness. National Blue Wear Blue Day is awareness actually of colon cancer. So if you uh, know someone or uh, who's been through that, you want to honor them, maybe wear blue or do, of course, make sure you do the uh, medical tests needed to make sure you're kept healthy and safe as well. So I'm wearing my, my blue Hawaiian shirt for National Blue Day, wear blue day. PSG of Mercer County has lots of resources for anybody in a career, career transition. You are always welcome. Anyone is welcome to come attend any of our programs. Some of our programs are, of course, job seeker specific, and some are really open to just about anybody or topic wise would be good for just about anybody and we welcome everyone. Um, other resources that we do have are our LinkedIn group. Our LinkedIn group is only members or people who have been to our in-person or virtual meetings at least once. Excuse me. So just because someone requests to join our group doesn't mean we automatically let them in. We do want people who've been through our group program before who have an interest in helping job seekers or are a job seeker or were a job seeker at some time. People who really understand the process. We have over 1,650 members and uh, we invite everyone once you're in the group to contribute to the group, share articles, share job leads. Um, any sort of information that you know or hear about that you think other job seekers may um, be interested in. Or maybe you've got a question, you need a little bit of help, you're wondering a best way to approach something within your job search, post that in the LinkedIn group and it's likely somebody will respond. Every once in a while, someone will send me articles and things that I should post on their behalf in the LinkedIn group. And I actually do not do that. I encourage you when you have something to post to do it because it only helps you and your visibility in LinkedIn by you being active in LinkedIn. So share information and be active. It's helpful to you. The other thing nice with the group is it doesn't matter how many first degree connections you have in LinkedIn. Um, when you have first degree connections, you can send them for free, what LinkedIn calls in mails, but the second and third degrees, you cannot send in mail in a free LinkedIn account. But you can send an in mail to anyone you're connected to in a group. So you can do so through the group. So it really expands your ability to connect with individuals. So if there are any project managers out there, if you have not yet joined the project manager group, there are over 900,000 members in the project manager group. If you join the project manager group, you now have connections to over 900,000 additional people that you can connect with on LinkedIn. So keep that in mind. Uh, PSG of Mercer County does also have a website. It is psgofmercercounty.org, psgofmercercounty.org. It is more than just a landing page. It is a very large and robust site with over 120 pages of content. We do keep up the content as current as possible very regularly. Uh, we do have um, a job postings page. And so we do occasionally get people that are posting jobs, open jobs. Uh, in there, and it's actually a two-part page. One is there are job postings that people are making, and the other is we have uh, links to over 2,600 company career pages, and that's just in Mercer County and the six border counties. So in, in those pages, we don't have job postings themselves. We have the links to the local companies and their career pages. 
And then once on their career pages, you can look at the postings that they have. So you can do that, or you can use those sets of pages to build a targeted company list. You may not have known how many companies were in Burlington or, or Middlesex or Mercer counties and which they are. So you can go take a look at that. Uh, we do also have a professional development tab in there is our e-learning page. We recently updated that. We now have links to 64, 64 e-learning websites. When I'm 64. Not quite there yet myself, but if you are interested while you are in your job search and career transition to fill your gap time with learning something new or maybe working towards a certification, a place you may be able to find the exact program that you want are on our e-learning page. Now, a lot of those sites that we connect to are completely free. So you can actually get free training. And some of them do have some form of subscription or payment. So it wasn't our intent only to show free learning websites, we wanted to give as many as possible so that you, the user, the customer can find the right program as easy as possible. So you don't have to search the web, you don't have to do a Google search, best e-learning websites. The 64 best ones are on our uh, website right now under the e-learning page. So go take a look at that. Um, so in just a moment, I will turn the meeting over to Terry, and I should probably do a very nice thing and make Terry the presenter, otherwise he will not be presenting, and it'll be a boring meeting otherwise. But I will turn it over to Terry, and um, uh, he is going to have a, a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation. Um, during that, I, again, I do ask you, for most of the program, keep your audio on mute, just so there's no accidental interruptions. Um, we are recording this program, so if there's anything that you miss, you can always watch it again on our YouTube channel. It will probably be up on our YouTube channel by the time we scrub the video, if not tonight, by tomorrow morning. If you have a question, use chat. Chat is a button on your screen in the upper right. Looks like a little circle with a tab. It's called a call out. So that's where you can call out your question. So what I ask is you have two choices. One is you could just type the word question and both Terry and I will be watching the chat. Probably me a little bit more than him because he's going to be doing his active presentation. And if I see the word question, that's the same as you kind of raising your hand and I'll know. In that case, what we'll do is we'll recognize you, ask you to unmute, and you can actually ask your question directly to Terry. And if for those of you that don't want your cameras on or your voice is being heard over the recording, you can actually type the question in by typing the word question, write the word question so I know you have a question. I don't want to mix miss it because of all the other chat information there. And then type your question and I'll read it out loud and uh, Terry will answer the question accordingly. So that is the way our program will be. Okay, very good. And I think we are all buttoned up. Looks like Terry is ready to go. So I am just really pleased, PSG of Mercer County is pleased to welcome this morning, Terrence Seaman. Terry Seaman is an executive career transition consultant with the Ayers Group, where he coaches executives and professionals that are in, a, in career transitions. He has been with the Ayers Group since 2009. He frequently speaks at career transition support group meetings on such topics as job search, career trans transition, and achieving success. Uh, previously, Terry had a long career in the corporate world as an HR training manager in such industries as energy, telecom, and pharma chem. The author of three books, Terry is also active as a leadership development consultant. Terry lives in Somerset, New Jersey with his wife, Joan, where he is active at his church and in his local community, where he moderates the St. Matthias Employment Ministry, founded in 2007. So PSG of Mercer County is always pleased to welcome one of our wisest friends, Terry Seaman. Thank you, David. Hi, everybody. It's great to be back with PSG of Mercer. The uh, talk today, Staying Sane, Active and Motivated, uh, started out life a couple of years ago as a uh, earlier talk called Staying Motivated. Uh, as uh, you probably all can attest uh, from being in job search, or related career transitions, uh, being motivated is, is definitely one of the challenges of this entire process of getting from uh, what you were doing before to what you wanna do next. Now layer on top of that, the COVID-19 pandemic, and you've got a very challenging situation. So when, um, when all of this unfolded last year, uh, we realized that the earlier staying motivated talk needed to be completely revamped. 
And so we did. And we came up with this new and expanded version, staying sane, active, and motivated while conducting a job search during the COVID-19 crisis. You'll notice the uh, visual I chose is the, uh, the, the rays of sunshine behind the clouds because uh, being an optimist myself, I think it's helpful to cultivate an attitude of optimism uh, during this particular time that we're in, especially if you are a job seeker. So this is me. Uh, Terrence is the full first name, but call me Terry. But if you're looking for me on LinkedIn, uh, look for me as Terrence, and uh, that way you'll find me and not a, another guy down in North Carolina who has a very similar name to me. He's uh, probably a, a great guy, but, uh, but if you want me, uh, look for me as Terrence. As Dave said, I'm with the Ayers Group, uh, and I'm very active on uh, social media. And if we're not already connected on LinkedIn, I would encourage you to go ahead and connect with me. I publish content uh, very frequently, some of it my own original content, and then some of it uh, good content I come across from others uh, that I think uh, would be good for the folks in my network. And so uh, I, I reshare it with my own uh, curation. So what we're gonna look at uh, in this uh, interactive presentation this morning is these six tips which if, if you'll notice the first letters of each one, they spell out the word active, avoid negativity, connect with others, take time for yourself, invest, visibility and exercise. And, um, and those of you that have seen my presentations before, you know that I always try to create a hook, some word that I can use to hang all the concepts on as a way to help you remember the content, if not all of it, then perhaps some of it. So uh, today, our hook is active. So let's start with avoiding negativity. As the uh, slogan on the left says, you can't live a positive life with a negative mind. And you all know, being job search uh, veterans of one degree or another, that uh, being positive is a very important part of the process. How do we then avoid negativity, meaning thinking negative thoughts or thinking about the, the gloom and doom around us. Uh, and there certainly has been a lot of gloom and doom around us since last year, uh, continuing into this, uh, this year as well. So how do we do that? It's not easy, uh, but I do have some suggestions for you. And then I wanna open it up uh, for some chat sharing to see what you would add. The greatest weapon William James, the famous American psychologist once said that we have in the battle with stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. We have complete control over what we think about. And so your number one weapon is your thoughts. So if you're finding on a given day that your thoughts are turning negative and it's not unusual for that to happen, I would say replace them. Replace those negative thoughts with some positive thoughts. And there are lots of different types of positive thoughts out there. Uh, here are a few that are specific to job seekers and career changers that I would encourage you to spend time on. The more you spend time on these kinds of positive thinking exercises, the less time you're gonna have available for the negative thinking and, uh, and negative thoughts. So just to tick off uh, the ones that are showing here, if you're in a job search or a career transition, this is a great time to think about why you are here. Review your purpose, review your why. Uh, reviewing your why, as the very popular speaker and writer Simon Sinek uh, has taught us a few years ago, is a very powerful thing to do because it gives you that sense of purpose behind all the things that you do, all the decisions that you make. And by having that clarity of purpose, you can really be very intentional about the choices that you make, whether in your career transition or other parts of your life. Related to review your purpose, this is a great time, if you haven't already, to write out your own mission statement. Just like when you worked in a, a company, your company or your department or your business unit had a mission statement, you as a professional should have your own mission statement. So write it out. 
What is it that you provide? What's your service or product? Who do you provide it to? Who's your customer or your client? And what can they expect of you? So write out your mission statement. It doesn't have to be complicated, but it's a very positive thing to do because you can then use that to convey to the people you're talking to in the course of your networking and interviewing what you are all about and the uh, impact you are looking to make. One of the things that uh, job seekers in particular are encouraged to do is to uh, identify your strengths. And this is a good time to do that. Uh, do a skills inventory. And in doing that skills inventory, uh, zero in on what you would consider to be your strengths in, in a number of different categories, including what are your strengths in, as far as people skills? What are your strengths as far as your particular functional area, whether it's accounting, uh, or IT or project management? What are your strengths as far as your technical skills? Like for example, your use of technology. Uh, so, so list your strengths and really zero in on the ones that you would consider to be your uh, core strengths that you wanna lead with. You wanna lead with them on your resume, you wanna lead with them on your LinkedIn, and you definitely wanna lead with them in your conversations with people about opportunities that you're discovering as, as you go. It's also important uh, to take time now in a career transition to delve into and write down your accomplishment stories. Write down those stories, folks, whether you use the PAR format or the CAR format or the STAR format. They're all good formats. Uh, I'm format agnostic. I encourage you to use one of them. Uh, I think PAR might be the oldest one, so let's give uh, props to PAR. And what that stands for, for those of you who are wondering what I'm talking about, problem, action, and results. What's the problem that you addressed? What are the actions that you took? And what are the results that you obtained for your team, for your clients, for your company? That's the, that's the way to write down your accomplishment stories. And when you write them down that way and then uh, rehearse in your own mind and then communicate them to others, they will definitely see what you could do for them. And that's the point of accomplishment stories. Accomplishment stories talk about what you've done before and they communicate what you can do for this next person that you're talking to. And then uh, last but certainly not least in this short list of positive thinking exercises, this is a great time to spend time on your dreams, the, the things you've always yearned to do uh, in your life or in your career, things that over the course of the many decades of your life, you've thought about doing. Well, now's a good time to you know, review them, go back, think about them again. Many of us, when we look back on our lives, we can point to roads that were not taken. We might've taken them, but we didn't. And there were reasons why we didn't. Well, now might be a good time to go back in, our, in your mind to think about that, review that decision, see if that road might now be one you wanna take. And, uh, and, and use some of your time during this transition to go and explore that road not taken from earlier in your career. So spend time on your dreams. Spending time's, time on your dreams is not a waste of time, folks. The uh, uh, well-known American author, Carl Sandburg said once, nothing happens unless first a dream, meaning that it's from our dreams uh, that, that that, that's the source of our realities, right? So all the realities that have ever happened in our lives in one way or another started with a dream, your dream, your parents' dream, somebody's dream. So spend time on your dreams. And just a couple of more things that you might think about as positive thinking exercises. You know, there's a lot of stress uh, related to a job search. And then when you add on COVID, there's, there's even more stress. But, uh, but I would encourage you to, uh, you know, really, you know, be very um, disciplined in your thinking about what you think about. And if you start thinking about things you can't control or change, stop, <laughs> push those things off to the side because thinking about them and worrying about them and stressing about them is not going to get you anywhere. It's much better to think about things you can control, things you can change, things that you can actually impact and do something about. 
and those would be more positive thinking exercises. So another uh, positive thinking exercise is gratitude. I especially like number two on this slide, which is call, visit, or send notes to those you are grateful uh, for or grateful to for perhaps something they did for you. Uh, during the uh, end of last year and the early part of this year, one of the things I encouraged my clients to do, and some of them actually did this, was to send out little holiday notes to people in their network, uh, wishing them either in the case of the year end, a happy holiday season, or in the case of the beginning of the year, a happy new year, and then uh, let them know if this was the case, something that they were grateful for that that person did for them. Maybe they, uh, maybe they helped by listening. Maybe they helped by forwarding a resume. Maybe they helped by giving you feedback. Well, in whatever way it was that, that you were grateful, let them know that you're grateful. So talk about a positive thing that, that you could do rather than spending time in negative thoughts. And then just one more, I think, before I ask you all a question. Another positive thing to do, and you can do this every day at the beginning of the day, this is a practice I try to do, though I often forget, and that is when you start your day, ask yourself, who can I help today? Who can I help today? When we help others, we are really helping ourselves because the, uh, the, the car people often talk about the karma of job search or the karma of career transition. This is it, folks. This is it. This is actually the answer to one of the biggest obstacles to networking because people think networking is begging others for something. Actually, you know what? The secret to networking is asking yourself this question, who can I help today? And if you approach networking, whether a job seeker or career changer as who can I help today? you're gonna generate so much positive karma for yourself, you're, you're not gonna believe the, uh, the results. So uh, one, one more positive thing that, that you could do instead of doing, uh, thinking about something negative. So uh, let's all open up the, uh, the chat uh, bubble that David talked uh, about before. And I have a question for all of you. And what I'd like you to do is think about the question and then type your answer in. And then uh, if everybody keeps that chat uh, box open, you'll see the answers start to fly by. Uh, David, you're still there, I hope, and you'll read to me what you're seeing. Sure. And, uh, and, and we'll do this a couple more times uh, as we go further in the talk. But the question now for avoiding negativity is this. In addition to the things that I just put forth um, as sort of a, a smorgasbord of ways to avoid uh, negativity, what helps you to avoid negativity? One more time. What helps you to avoid negativity? Just type that in. Mike Whalen, walking. Positive self-talk, humor videos, setting some me time, biking, Go outside and take a walk, keeping busy, exercise, seek new surroundings for a short while. Well, it's going, going by really fast. Talking, taking really, a walk really in nature. <laughs> I need to take a speed reading class. Yeah, really? Um, talking <laughs> Man, to friends and walking, exercise and eating well. Select who I want to spend time with, meditation and yoga, meditation. Wow. Listing what I'm thankful for, staying away from toxic people, helping others, mm, practicing fantastic. mindfulness, especially when walking the dog. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the dog is practicing mindfulness. <laughs> I start my day listening to my church's prayer and devotion session on Facebook. I also belong to SM Church. Fantastic. Getting fresh air and taking a walk, keeping a smile on my face. <laughs> a happy screensaver. This is a cute one. There spending time with family, helping others networking, and listening to David's jokes. Okay, that'll get you points. <laughs> Going on a drive. List all things I'm grateful for. Meditating, giving back to my community, catching up with old friends, coworkers, etc., without an ask up front. 
Oh, that's I like that. Whole, one. Yep, that's the whole goal of uh, networking. Uh, that is do some physical hard work. Do mitzvahs. Okay. Oh, I know very good. My uh, yeah. Jewish wannabe friend. Very, very good, Chuck. So, and, and, that, and, that, and that's actually a, a very good thought. Uh, I'd encourage you all, whether Jew, Jewish or not, take that idea with you, that idea of mitzvahs. David, I'm going to not, I'm going to defer to you. Uh, if you could give us a, uh, a capsule uh, definition of to do a mitzvah. Uh, essentially, good deeds. There you go. Listening to up tempo music. I write in a gratitude journal. So some really Fantastic. wonderful ideas. Yeah, they really are. David, I, I know that in Zoom, you can sort of uh, record the chat. Can, can it be recorded here and go to meeting? It is, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so this, and actually this what, what I will do, Terry, uh, later today, I will actually post the chat along in the same place on our website, along with your slides and a link to the video. Oh, this is this is fantastic because because everybody you've got now with with everybody's answers to that question, you now have so much to choose from. And really, you only need maybe one or two or three of these things. But isn't it great that you now have all of these answers, probably 50 some answers of ways in which you can stay very positive in your thinking and in your outlook. So so thank you, David. And thank you, everybody, for jumping in there. We'll, we'll, we'll do this kind of, kind of thing a couple more times before we're done. So uh, good job, everybody. So that's, uh, that's the A in active, avoiding negativity as best you can. And then uh, the C is, is for connecting. Always be connecting, as uh, uh, Marty Latman likes to say, right? Marty's got some, um, some great sayings, always be connecting, always be positive, always be professional, always be this, always be that. I, I love those. I love those. I, I, I've even uh, adopted uh, uh, one of those for my uh, email signature. If you ever get an email from me at the end of the signature, you'll see uh, always be connecting. And, and I uh, got that directly from Marty. And if anybody here on this uh, go to meeting today does not know Marty, make it a goal. Write this down. Make it a goal to, to meet Marty Latman. Uh, L-A-T-M-A-N. Uh, pro probably most of you know him, but just, just in case there's a couple of you there that don't, uh, Marty, like David, is a uh, group uh, moderator, group facilitator of a couple of groups up in nor northern New Jersey, and, uh, and a wonderful human being who is there to help you, just as David is, um, uh, to help you in your job search, in your career transition, to achieve uh, goals that you are setting. So anyhow, uh, always be connecting. The power of connecting, very important to uh, be reaching out. Now, in the answers that just flew by, I think it was Solomon's answer was uh, reaching out to others. And, uh, and I totally wanna underline that. That's so, so important. This is a time to not go it alone. If you're in a job search, do not go it alone, folks. Uh, job search can be very isolating, very lonely if you go it alone. And, and if you go it alone, you, you don't have input. You don't have ideas from others. You don't get feedback. You don't get moral support. Uh, you, you just don't get the good things that come from connecting with others. So um, open up your chat boxes again, folks, because I want to ask you a question. And again, you know, uh, take the question in for a moment and then just type in uh, your thoughts and, and they'll start to zoom by and David and I will do our best to keep up with them. And that is, what benefits do you get or have you gotten from connecting with others during your job search, during your career transition? What benefits have you gotten from connecting with others? Yeah. Okay, so they're starting to come in. Ideas, information, encouragement, great suggestions. I got two interviews. Oh, two nice. interviews, Barbara, way to go. <laughs> Support and clarity. Insights, motivation, sense of value, ability to help others, nice. advice. Nice. I gain joy by being able to help others. Uh, oh, very nice, Vito. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Introductions to uh, people at target companies, best practices to similar problems, job leads, feeling better emotionally, mm. alternative thoughts and job leads, an interview, then a job, new friends. That's nice. Friendships. Another one, uh, a reality check on my value to the market after lots of rejection and confusion. Whoa, so, good so one. Leads. Okay, so yeah, that's good. Um, a reality check. Oh, sometimes that's helpful. Yeah. Sense of community, uplifted ideas, the joy of giving to others. Man, fantastic. Wow. wow very upbeat group. Excellent stuff. And, and again, I'm, I'm going to send a virtual gold star to Solomon for another great answer, because it's true. We do experience a lot of rejection uh, in a job search. It just comes with the territory. And so if you're going it alone, then you're not going to get that support uh, from others. That is so helpful. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and getting getting back up on the horse, so to speak, uh, and getting back into into the arena so um so connect with others everybody very very key part of this process the t in active is for take a break and uh, when i came across this visual i i grabbed it right away because i thought oh what a what a great you know assortment of ways to to take a break uh including the one uh, kind of in the the middle top row unplug from your phone i don't know if you can do that especially if you're waiting for calls from recruiters or hiring managers. But, uh, but, if, it, but if you can adapt that one somehow to, uh, uh, to unplug uh, for, for some of the day, uh, that might be helpful. Uh, I don't know about uh, all of you, what, what our median age is of the group, but uh, David mentioned at the beginning that uh, was it Penn Gillette has turned 66. Uh, I turned 66 in January. So I'm definitely a big proponent of take a nap. <laughs> oh, and, and it's not just a, a joke. Uh, the science of, of sleep uh, has taught us over the last uh, 10, 15 years that the, uh, the value of taking a nap is actually nothing to be sneezed at. Uh, following a nap, you can experience a uh, significant increase in productivity and brain power. So uh, that's an end of my talk on naps. But uh, take a break, folks. Uh, you know, some people ask, uh, clients ask me, Terry, how uh, many hours a week should I put in on the job search? I'm very reluctant to give a number. What I'd like to say is, is really, you know, dedicate yourself to it, you know, create a routine uh, and, and make, make sure that you're, you're really disciplined about your job search and that you're you're doing something productive every day but you also have to take a break you also have to have time for yourself you know whether it's time as this uh, visual says for enjoying the sweet small moments of life reading something taking a walk in nature daydreaming listening to music meditation or, or yoga uh, whatever it might be or even just taking taking a coffee break or a tea break it's so important to take a break because this taking a break is part of a of a bigger issue here that didn't exactly fit into the word active, but I'm I'm tying it in here. And the idea is taking good care of yourself, self-care. The concept of self-care has been around for a long time. Uh, any professionals in the social work or healthcare fields, they know about it. It really comes from there. That's where I learned about it first uh, some years ago. Uh, but self-care literally means, are you taking good care of you? Because if you're not, then you're actually setting yourself up for some challenges and maybe even some setbacks and perhaps even some failures. So what, is, what goes into self-care? Well, this visual, which I came across, does a really nice job of breaking down self-care into four uh, categories the physical components, uh, in particular sleep and exercise, the emotional components, in particular uh, managing stress and, and uh, kindness toward yourself and others, the social aspects. You know, we talked a moment ago about connecting with others, making sure you have a good social support system where you can spend quality time with others. Right, asking for their help, asking for their ideas, their advice, their input. 
Uh, and then there's the spiritual component, which can be defined uh, really any way you want to. But the idea is it's time alone with what I like to call your higher self or your inner self, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, thought of as religion, though it can be. Uh, it can be, It's time alone with your higher self, whether it's meditation, yoga, nature, uh, journaling, uh, finding some space in your home or elsewhere that's just your sacred space that you go to, whether it's every day or, or every so often, where you can really just uh, have that quiet time that you need to go a little deeper in your thinking and in your reflection uh, on what's happening in your life right now. So self-care, very important. Uh, a colleague of mine from Canada who passed away a few years ago uh, shared this little slogan with me, which I love, because what it does is it takes self-care and puts it into an even bigger picture. And the slogan is, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of this place. So it's like the layers of care. Starts with you taking care of yourself, but then it expands out to taking care of the people that you care most about. Maybe your, your spouse or your partner, your children, uh, your family, your neighbors. And then taking care of this place, you know, it could be your neighborhood, your town, the state of New Jersey, the United States, the world, whatever it might be. So it kind of takes self-care and, and magnifies it into a very uh, encompassing and potentially powerful concept. So um, I always like to nod toward my, uh, my colleagues, no longer with us, but she certainly left a lasting legacy uh, with me and others. And then just to kind of finish up this, um, um, the section on um, you know taking a break. <laughs> we've really we've really expanded this taking a break, haven't we? Uh, and that is, I came across this visual for tips to reduce the anxiety many of us are feeling related to COVID-19. And I don't know how anxious you're feeling this year versus last year. Hopefully, maybe a little less. Uh, if you've gotten your vaccines and you're noticing the numbers are trending down, maybe anxiety is trending down. But if by some, uh, if for some reason your anxiety is still high, uh, again, here's some great thoughts. Uh, notice the very first one in the top of the first column. Focus on things you can control versus the things you can control. And then there's a few others here that I think are, are really worth adopting. Uh, I've, I've tried to adopt a couple of these. Uh, for example, the one at the top of the next column, controlling how often I'm plugged into the news. Uh, I'm kind of a news junkie type of person, and I've really cut back on uh, how much time I focus on the news. I watch the news every day. Uh, I watch Wolf Blitzer on CNN. <laughs> That's my news source of choice. Uh, but that's it. I've, I've really cut it way back from what uh, it was at an earlier point in time. Anyway, some tips to reduce COVID-related anxiety. Oh, and then uh, create a routine, which I mentioned before. The I in active is invest. And I recommend that you invest in learning. Uh, learning is something that I think we all do throughout our lives, but I want to zero in on a job search or a career transition. In a job search or a career transition, one of the questions you're likely to be asked by people that you meet, whether uh, recruiters, networkers, uh, interviewers, hiring managers, will be some variation of the following. So what have you been doing since you left your last company? If, uh, if that question comes along, you want to have a really good answer to it. And there are lots of good answers. But one type of good answer is to tell them about what you've been learning. And so I'm a big believer in intentional learning for job seekers and career changers. That is, set some learning goals for yourself and then go ahead and learn. Whatever it is, 
you've set out to learn. And 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 I'm I I recommend this all the time to my clients. And I've had clients really knock my socks off with the things that they've gone ahead and you know went and and learned. You know, ranging from uh, clients that have gone uh, and gotten certified in Agile as Scrum Masters, uh, clients that have gone and, and studied for their PMPs, their, their project management certification. Uh, so the, the examples go on and on. But, uh, but let me ask you all to open up your chat bubble again, and let me ask you, during your job search or career transition, what's one thing that you have learned? What's one thing you've learned? Okay, I'll keep an eye open. What's one thing you've learned during this uh, this period, this this great opportunity that you've got? <clears throat> Folks, you can if you want to respond, you're welcome to put so in chat. Yeah, so Mike, makes Mike me more Wallace. humble and human. Yeah. How to work How to from work. home. Very interesting. <laughs> prepare, yeah, for, prepare for interviews. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, learn more about not, not for profits. Learn more gratitude. Mm -hmm. How to prepare, have prepared stories that you can tell when asked various questions. Good, good. How to network. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Very important change my industry consider volunteer work and prepare for interviews yeah that was success that's the thing i used yeah good uh that i need to modify my resume for ats the applicant oh, transfer boy. system yeah yeah cloud computing currently acting as v ciso for not-for-profit mentoring ppl to move into cyber or oh, people to move into cybersecurity. Yeah. Continue participating in professional webinars to maintain my credentials. That's a good Excellent. Idea. Excellent. Good. Friendships matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they really do. And that is, that is an important learning. And, and the, these are. Then I need to overcome imposter. imposter syndrome as my expertise is truly aligned with roles at the levels I seek. Don't ask questions that can be answered by research on the web or other sources. Yeah, yeah, do your homework. Completed the instructional designer learning path on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Take things as they present themselves. We are all human, never take things for granted. Life changes and grows. Yeah, that's right. Unrelated to job search, have taken time to learn more about various personal financial and legal matters. Very good, Dave. Yeah, excellent. Very yeah, good. Per personal growth during a transition in addition to job search. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Sure. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I think that's those answers represent pretty much the spectrum of learning uh, that I think about during a uh, job search. It's it's everything. It's from, you know, learning about yourself, <laughs> right, uh, to learning about different subject areas, to learning about the process of job search, career change. So, uh, so great answers, everybody. And there is so much to learn. And, and I, I would encourage you, be intentional. You know, grow through what you go through, as the visual says on this slide, which I, I've always loved that expression. I'm not sure exactly where it's from, but, but I think it's, you know, we're all going through this thing, this career transition, this job search. So why not grow through it and come out of it at the other end with a really impressive answer to that question. So what have you been doing since you last left your last company? Another uh, interpretation of the I in active is inspire yourself and others. Inspire yourself and others. One of the ways that I inspire myself uh, is uh, every day I, I'm very active uh, on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll go look at my feed and I would say almost every morning there's something inspirational there that's been posted by somebody I'm connected to, whether it's other career coaches, whether it's uh, people in business, whether it's writers, authors that I follow. And, um, and, and usually I'm successful at starting the day with some inspirational thought that somebody has shared. 
that's one of the things I encourage you to do too, is find those sources of inspiration that really do fill you up with, with a, a, a good feeling, a good thought for the day. And then why not share that with others? Go ahead and click like on it, uh, maybe leave a comment. Uh, perhaps in some cases, if you find one that's really good, go ahead and share it with your network, uh, with your own curation type comment at the, at the top and, uh, and share that inspiration with others. Then that brings me to the V in active. Again, this, this one's sort of a twofer, uh, visibility and volunteering. First on visibility, uh, so important to make sure that you're not just on LinkedIn, but that you are active on LinkedIn. The more active you are on LinkedIn, the more visible you will be when people are searching uh, on the keywords that you have in your profile. So how do you become uh, visible on LinkedIn? Clicking like, leaving a comment, sharing content, posting updates, and participating in group discussions. When David mentioned earlier about uh, joining groups, because when you join a group, let's say a group with 90,000 members, like the one that he mentioned, uh, you are essentially connected to all of those 90,000 people, believe it or not, as David said before. So 900,000. 900,000 indeed. So yeah, so participate in those groups. If somebody's posted a question, they're looking for answers or, or comments or, or uh, perspectives. So go ahead and, and, and respond. And then you can post discussion topics yourself and then others will come along and respond to you. So um, one of the things that people tend to forget about LinkedIn is that LinkedIn is a type of social media. And, and that first word is the key, social, meaning that the idea is that LinkedIn should be a place where people are social, where they're interacting with each other, where there's give and take, where there's exchanges of ideas. So don't just be on LinkedIn, participate actively on LinkedIn and you'll become visible. And the more visible you are, the more findable you will be. And then the other sense of the, uh, for the V and active is volunteer. Spend some time. It doesn't have to be, you know, formalized, you know, like, uh, like you know, working at your food bank or, or Habitat for Humanity, though those are, are wonderful organizations. It could be more informal. It could be just checking in on your elderly neighbor to see if they need something at the store since you're making a run. Uh, but whatever the case might be, spend some time uh, every week helping somebody out in some way. And, and if you would all open up your chat boxes, I'd like to ask you about this one because it's, it's so important and yet gets, gets lost in the shuffle because there's so much going on in your life in addition to your job search and your, your career and everything else that's going on. That sometimes this, this aspect of helping other people uh, and being, being there to help them uh, sometimes gets lost. So what I'd like to ask for this sharing is, uh, what type of volunteering are you doing during your career transition? And Terry, while we wait for those uh, uh, questions or answers to come in, there's one question from Solomon. I've heard that if on LinkedIn you are not currently employed, you are deprioritized in the results. So creating current consulting position may help. Is this true? Absolutely, yes. And um, uh, Solomon, you and I can talk about that offline, but, uh, but if any of you also have that question, uh, maybe David, you and I can, can perhaps uh, publish something afterwards. But David, is there anything you'd like to add uh, to my answer to that question? Yeah, LinkedIn has um, its own version of a Google search. When people search not for you by name, but maybe by your role or, or other things, and you should come up and it has a search algorithm. And one of the requirements to have a 100% complete profile is a current position. And uh, people with a 100% complete profile do come up higher than those that don't have a 100% complete profile. So yeah, putting a position similar to what you do professionally and call it your consultant, so you can call yourself Solomon the consultant, um, I think is a very good idea. Yeah. All right, great question, Solomon. Thank you, and uh, and David, nice answer. 
So a whole bunch of answers have come in with regard to the, the volunteering question. Can we, uh, can we see if we can catch up with them, David? Sure. Um, and Deb has a question. What is the URL for the project management group? Um, I, I put the name of the two groups in chat. So just search for the names. I'll try and get the URLs later. Uh, but there's a project manager group with 947,000 members and a Lean Six Sigma group with 735,000. Those are the official names from uh, LinkedIn. But Kevin, and then there are others. Uh, a blood drive chairman. So that wow. was one. Uh, <laughs> Volunteer okay. monthly at my church's food pantry. Serve on three nice. boards pro bono. Nice. Snow blow the neighbor's neighborhood during snowstorms. Um, you're welcome to come to my house. <laughs> um, Salesforce admin with Philadelphia Great Careers Group. Okay. Um, recently connected my favorite charity and I'm working as a fundraiser. Nice. Mentoring. Volunteering with PSG, thank you. Um, assist you people in their job search, getting the COVID vaccine, et cetera. Um, farmers Against Hunger, packaging uh, produce for food banks. Fantastic. Have been a hiring manager when conducting my own search. I will assist others with their resume creation. That's nice. Oh, way, way to go, Chuck. Good man. Um, donating food weekly to Homefront, the local homeless nonprofit organization for single parent families. That's great. Um, land conservancies, chair at a current events group. Nice. So as you can see, folks, yeah, helping neighbors. Uh, now, uh, Dave, David, who just put in helping neighbors with some home repair and maintenance needs, David, uh, I don't know, David, if you want to unmute and briefly tell everybody what's behind that comment. Sorry, I had to figure out how to unmute there. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I live in Houston and uh, we just lived through this uh, very unusual uh, Arctic storm here where a lot of people without power three or four days and, uh, and there are li literally hundreds of thousands of uh, people uh, whose uh water pipes burst and their homes yep. subsequently flooded and yep. all this at a time where there was no power and it's very cold so yeah uh, for the next so, several months uh people will be recovering from that and uh, i told terry previously that uh it was it's, it's pretty heartening to see uh the extent of neighbors helping neighbors uh it, it's it's uncommon, but when when there's a need like this, it's it's heartening to see uh, see all the help. Indeed, thank you, Dave. Yeah, Dave, Dave had told me that story, uh, um, you know, previous to today, and and uh, and and whenever I hear about neighbors rallying to help their neighbors during times of of crisis, I think that's the that's the spirit. That's the spirit of of volunteering of helping others that we all have within us and, and i encourage anybody in a career transition you know to you know, go ahead and 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 let that let that spirit express itself in some way uh whether, whether it's a dire situation or just a you know a nor normal covid pandemic situation well great great answers everybody and uh and you've got a great uh, again a great list of ideas to draw inspiration from. Uh, just one, one last thing on this uh, volunteering. A few years ago, there was a story in the news. I don't know if any of you remember it, but it really it, it made me, uh, it, it really made an impression on me, was this little boy, I forget what town this was, um, whether it was Detroit or somewhere like that. But this little boy said to his dad, uh, there's so many homeless in our town. Uh, I, I want to do something for them. I want to I want to feed them. And what he ended up doing was going to the local McDonald's, buying a big bag of cheeseburgers, and then with his dad as as the escort and the chaperone, he went downtown and handed out cheeseburgers to the homeless. And uh, and it was covered by the media. And I remember seeing it on TV and seeing it in print. And I thought to myself. What a great example of that, that spirit of helping others that we all, I think we all have it inside of us and we just need to let, let it out in some way uh, that, that we feel you know, moved to do.
helping our neighbors out. And then last but not least, we come to the E in active and that stands for exercise. And when I saw this picture of this old guy uh, trying to exercise, I thought, eh, that's pretty close to me. <laughs> and here we are, uh, you know, in our, in our homes, many of us, uh, uh, because of, uh, uh, you know, the pandemic. Uh, but yet we need to stay in shape somehow. We need to somehow not turn into uh, shapeless couch potatoes as a result of the pandemic. And so uh, uh, let me ask uh, what, one more chat question for the group. Uh, what are you doing to exercise and stay in shape during COVID-19? What are, what are you doing to exercise and stay in shape? Uh, on my list would be uh, yoga, tai chi, walking. Uh, what else do I do? I guess it would be those, those three things. What, what are you doing? to exercise and stay in shape. So I got a couple, we got pickleball. Pickleball. And uh, yep, that seems like a lot of fun. Um, and yeah. I posted that I swim laps three times a week. Oh, good for you, Dave. Yep, road biking, walking, walking, walking with good friends, yoga, oh, and <clears throat> yep, watching what I eat um oops it's going by so fast um, yeah really varied workouts at the local gym in home and outdoor running gym and basement with treadmill weights weight bench and walking he may be fantastic maybe opening that up to friends soon gym and basement with treadmill oh i said that one uh where is their pickleball <laughs> <laughs> um yoga babysitting with with grandkids i'm not sure what h-i-i-t is but that was posted walk the dog biking walking five m's per day miles i guess wow that's yeah. pretty good yeah five miles gotta be better than five meters um mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, <laughs> go on a treadmill twice a week which is much better than not at all dance to upbeat music yep very resistance good. bands hiking manual yard work yeah i like manual yard work skiing snowshoeing in the winter uh to stay healthy walking yoga youtube fitness videos that's a nice way to get yep. it yep <clears> yeah <throat> oh, great great idea so so if any of you have been wondering you know because of the pandemic closing your local planet fitness or or other gym you know what what can i do here's a whole bunch of ideas of, of ways in which you can move around and get more active and and exercise i would encourage you to find something that works for you uh one of the things that that i've learned over the last uh you know uh, several years is that there's a very interesting research project ongoing uh, called the blue zones uh blue as as in the color blue b-l-u-e zones z-o-n-e-s the blue zones and the blue zones research is looking at uh places in the world where people live long and healthy lives uh, with low incidences of common uh, diseases like heart disease, cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, you know, that, that do tend to afflict people when they get older. And the Blue Zones research has been uh, delving into, you know, what's different about these people in these places and their lifestyles. And one of the things they found is that these people are very physically active, walking, doing yard work, gardening, uh, just getting out of the house and moving around. Just, just the movement itself, it doesn't have to be Planet Fitness. It doesn't have to be uh, anything, you know, that involves a, a big expenditure. Uh, just, just regular daily movement is one of the nine factors that the Blue Zones research uh, has uncovered. So take a look at that, everybody, the, the Blue Zones. Oh, I see that that one of you, you're actually reading the Blue Zones book. Good. Yeah, th there's a website, there's a newsletter. Uh, it's, it's fascinating and it's very uh, relevant, I think, uh, particularly if like me, you're getting into uh, the senior citizen uh, zone of life uh, to, to plug into the Blue Zones research. Well, everybody, I really appreciate your uh, joining me in this journey this morning of uh, staying sane, active, and motivated. I like to close with this slide, which I came across uh, in my, uh, in my uh, search online. 
Uh, take a look at the coffee mug this lady is sipping from. It's a quote from the artist Frida Kahlo. And the quote says, at the end of the day, we can endure much more than we think we can. And I tell you, from last year to now, we have definitely been enduring something historic. I mean, this one's going into the history books, you know, the whole pandemic and everything else going on. Uh, we, have, we have endured so much. And, and I think, I hope, I pray that we are all going to come out of this stronger, better, smarter, uh, and really more able to take on anything that comes next. At least that, that is my hope. So with that, here's my bonus slide where I just took the word sane as a way to summarize some of my key points today. It's very important during a career transition to do all the things you can think of to support your well-being. Try your best to always be positive. And if the negativity starts to creep up, remember those positive thinking things you could do. Never give up on your goals and on what you are pursuing in your career dream and be sure to exercise to stay fit stay healthy um so don't forget stay sane everybody as best you can uh and i know that this this ongoing pandemic is driving some of us up the wall but uh but don't let it get to you do do some of the things we talked about today and i certainly hope that you got one or two takeaways from today's talk with that, I want to say uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, for joining me in this. Thank you, David. I'm going to hand it back to you, David, to take it from here. Well, Terry, thank you so much. It's always a joy when you come by and give a presentation. Uh, one thing I really liked about this, and I know you've done this in your in-person presentations, having us uh, asking questions of us and giving us an opportunity to respond allows us to reflect. So we're not just listening to advice and your tips and, and i like using the active acronym but it allows us to really reflect for ourselves of things that we've accomplished that we can do or we should do and i think it just really uh, uh makes us feel a little bit better knowing that even though it's a little bit of a rough time between COVID and job loss we are doing things to uh to keep ourselves active so thank you i, I this format's wonderful thank you david my pleasure and uh letting you know we're going to wrap up the meeting in just a couple minutes and then afterwards we are going to keep the uh, session open i will turn off the recording at that point so you can uh, feel more comfortable uh, discussing at that time but it then becomes an open discussion uh, probably for the next three we got plenty of time so we could do it for 45 minutes or more if we want but just before we get to that point want to let you know a couple of other things uh what's coming up next week um, I did put this in the chat, but I will let you know next week, March 12th, Deborah Wheatman will be here. She'll be back. I'm so glad Deborah will be joining us. She is a career coach. A few years ago, she moved out of state and uh, was not able to present any longer, but virtually uh, not a barrier any longer. How to write a great resume. Deborah is a, is a career coach who helps people with their resume. She will talk about how to write a great resume. That is next week, March 12th at 10 o'clock in the morning right here. And then March 19th, Doug Berger is coming back. The Breakthrough Roadmap, a guide to empowering yourself. He has some great tips and suggestions to really helping us stay focused in, in that way as well. Um, other groups, we're certainly friends and fans of lots of groups that support uh, PS, I'm sorry, job seeker support in addition to PSG of Mercer County. Um, next week, March 13th, the Breakfast Club of New Jersey will be presenting uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning. You can get the connection info, thebreakfastclubnj.com, thebreakfastclubnj.com. Saturday, March 13th, at 8 o'clock in the morning, Ken Lang will be presenting LinkedIn and networking. Ken is one of the LinkedIn gurus in the area, really uh, informative information. He's on panels with LinkedIn, the company, not just a bunch of people getting together and has a lot of great insight. So that's next Saturday. 
Um, and uh, also each Tuesday evening or late afternoon, depending on how late you get up, uh, Tuesdays at 7.30 in the evening, uh, New Jersey job seekers will be meeting and they always meet uh, virtually as well. And uh, uh, it's always an open discussion that uh, all the participants participate together. And it's gonna be led this week by Ed Hahn, another New Jersey LinkedIn guru. What recruiters are looking for? Ed is an internal recruiter with Senlar and uh, he's been a recruiter a long time. So uh, you can find the Zoom meeting link in our LinkedIn group, PSG of Mercer County uh, LinkedIn group. I posted it uh, late yesterday, so it's there. Um, if I can, I will look for it and find it and post it in chat in just a little while. And then our cousin organizations, uh, PSG of Morris County meets every Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning. PSG of Morris County is psgmc.org, psgmc or Morris County MC.org. And also PSG of Central New Jersey will be meeting, psgcnj.biz every Monday at 10.30 in the morning. That's psgcnj.biz. So that's what's going around in your neighborhood over the next week or so. And so once again, uh, thank you so much to Terry for being a part of the, the presentation and giving this presentation today. I'm so glad so many of you were able to be here and uh, participate today. And uh, so we hope to see you at least virtually somewhere within the next week. And if not out in other groups, uh, hopefully by next week right here at PSG of Mercer County when Deborah Wheatman is presenting about resumes. So until then, I'll simply say, have a happy Aloha Friday and goodbye, everybody. <laughs>